In the last YPL video, we have focused on the frequency stability, but not the timing a lot. In this video, I'm going to show the image of why we need the timing in a digital or wireline system. As we discussed, in the data transmission, we need to move the data from SOCA through a cable or channel to SOCB. The goal of a data transmission is to achieve an error free or very low data rate at the receiver side. Therefore, the sampling timing is critical. For link quality and margin estimation, we care how the sample sampling time TS and sample voltage VS since both will affect the quantizer's decision to be wrong or right, which affects the BL rate target. Obviously, bigger sample voltage VS would make the sampler make a better decision with that error. Not only one sample in the green one we care about, but also every bit that the blue one we are interested in. Therefore, chopping the waveform in each bit time or one unit interval and overlaying them shown in one UI or two UIs is necessary. As you can see, the diagram becomes a very useful tool for evaluating the timing of the signaling performance as a design margin. For example, you can identify either the CK data sample 1 or the CK data sample 2 has a better timing margin to get the right decision or error free. Also, you can identify either the sample voltage 1 vs 1 or the sample voltage 2 vs 2 has a better voltage margin for a low BL rate target. Overall, the performance metric can be summarized by the eye width and eye height easily. To address the timing concept, a simple wireline data transmission via channel is shown here. The transmitter signal D in is sampled through a TX clock CKTX and the digital bits are converted to analog waveform by the TX driver. The output swing of the TX could be hundreds of millivolts and sent through a channel to the arc's input. The arcs from an amplifier will amplify the swing for the sampler. Of course, the sampler may require the RX clock CK arcs to sample the data properly. As you can see, the timing between the receiver data V arcs and the clock CK arcs could be arbitrary. Ideally, CK arcs rising edge should sample at the middle of the eye, which is an ideal phase phi i. Unfortunately, the CK arcs may not be able to sample at the ideal phase if we don't do anything on it. For example, sometimes the CK arcs could be early at the phi early or be late at the phi late. Either one would be bad to sample at the delta V arcs transition edge, which will cause a bit of error. So, what can we do? Think about your own images for 5 seconds. Yes, if both TX and RX clocks can be synchronized in both frequencies and phase, then the RX clock sampling phase would be synchronized with the input data VX over time. Why? Right, the data rate and phase of the input data VX is defined by the TX which is coming from the TS clock CKTX. If the source of both clock is the same, then both frequencies should be the same and even the same phase while both the clock channels match well. Therefore, people may call it source synchronous clocking as well to emphasize the clock comes from the same source. Lastly, is anything wrong with the synchronous clocking? Yes to many input-output I.O. interfaces. Therefore, the design overhead to match all three wires is challenging. The area and power overhead of sending one data C-link with three wires are painful. Usually, the data array or speed is limited by those overheads. What can we do better with it? Great. 
we can generate a clock source with a PL inside the TX without going through any I.O. Then simply send the TX clock to the RX to keep the both TX and RX synchronous in both frequency and phase. So the wires can be reduced to two wires instead of original three. But the data transmission throughput is still limited by the extra clock wire. For example, one data lane must be accompanied with one clock lane. How can we improve the throughput efficiently with fewer wires? Think about your own images for 5 seconds. Bingo! The simplest way of increasing the throughput is to add more data lanes to send more data but share a single clock lane. For example, if 10 data lanes are sending the data with one clock data for synchronous clocking, then the clock overhead is only 10% in the link. Therefore, the throughput is efficient with equivalent fuel wasting wires. But this fee forward sharing clock will still limit the maximum operating frequency. Why? Think about the speed images for 5 seconds. Right, delay mismatch. There are 10 lanes, and obviously, those 10 data paths may not have the same delay. Therefore, the sharing clock only guarantees the same frequency, but not the phase. What's the image of the speed limit due to the delay mismatch or skew? Yes, even we assume the clock CKX will sample the lane 0, VX0, and the right bar, which would be 50 at the middle of the eye or maximum available swing. However, the data phase of the RX then one VX could be late, or the data phase of RX then 9 VX9 could be early. Either case would end up the fixed clock phase to sample at the transition edge of very little voltage swing. So both sample phase 51 and 59 would result in sample errors. In addition to the delay mismatch between data lengths, the signal integrity of the clock and data are quite critical too. If the small jitter comes from the channel loss or crosstalk to either the clock or data lens, the receiver clock CKX and data VX would have more timing uncertainty. In this example, even though the CKX sampled the lens 0 VX0 at the right spot without skew or delay mismatch if both phases of CKX and VX0 would not align or track jitter together. It's likely the sample point would move the wrong spot and result in an error. To avoid the transmission error without improving the circuit impairment or topology, what can we do? Yes, this will be your waveform or eye image. If the jitter stays the same, increase the data bit period from TB1 to TB2 such that it moves the jitter sample away from the edge and gets the maximum available sample voltage over the jitter. Similarly, the increased bit period will mitigate the delay mismatch between lanes. But that's not what we want. Since the data rate is limited by the timing uncertainty due to the phase skew and jitter. What can we improve the transmission speed further? Think about your own images for 5 seconds. Bingo! As we know, the phase in multiple lanes cannot be matched well, and we can just treat them as monochrome system with the same frequency. But phase uncertainty between different lanes. So, the circuit image is adding another PL at the RX. Why would you need the PL at the RX? As we discussed, the TS clock frequency would be too high if the data rate goes higher. Sending such high frequency clock through the channel, the jitter would be amplified due to the limited channel bandwidth, and the power would be higher than it should be. If we send the TX reference clock through the channel, there is no speed constraint, 
since the reference clock is usually tens of megahertz range as we talked about in the YPL video. Since both reference clock is the same at the TXPL and RSPL, both TX and RS clock frequency will maintain the same, and only the phase difference. In addition, the RSPL can further filter the high frequency jitter from the clock distribution or transmission by the PL's low pass characteristic. Is that good enough for the sampling phase? The last piece would be the phase adjustment, which can be implemented in several ways. The fundamental image is applying a negative feedback loop as the PL. Comparable phases of the input data VX and clock CKX at each individual end and make a correction to adjust the RX sampling phase by a phase rotator. For example, if the clock phase is dead, then the phase detector PD output will send an up control to the phase rotator and enforce its phase earlier. On the other hand, if the clock phase is early, then the PD's output will send a down control to the phase rotator and enforce its phase later. Finally, both PD and PR will push the clock phase into the middle of the eye to get a maximum sample voltage. Even though the monosynchronous system mitigates lots of issues, sometimes the wires or pin counts are still limited to send the reference clock to the RX. The area overhead of sending extra low frequency clock seems wasteful. So, what can we do? Think about your own images for 5 seconds. Yes, if we cannot send the reference clock, we just don't send it at all. Remember in our YPO discussion, every SOC chip should have its own reference clock crystal oscillator and we just use it. But why not use it in the first place? Any obvious image in your head? Correct, mismatch. The crystal oscillator must be slightly different between each part, even though the difference is little. So there is a certain frequency offset, the hundreds of ppm errors in addition to the unknown phase. Usually, we call a separate reference clocking is the plus cross clocking system. Since both TX and RX have a frequency offset, the phase would have a slow drifting over time. Obviously, there's no free lunch, and the design overhead is that the RX phase adjustment must include a frequency offset correction by adding an integral path to cover such frequency offset over PVT. Since this timing recovery may require towering both frequency and phase error, we may call it clock and data recovery CDR and receiver to emphasize its both responsibility and we will talk about the CDR's topology in detail later. Here are the summarized images you must have for a timing image. We've known the data would have 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 transition. So, the I diagram would be bounded by the transition time as shown here. Which sample point is better in terms of the L3 target? Think about your own images for 5 seconds. Bingo! Obviously, sampling the data at the CKDS2 is better than the CKDS1. The CKDS2 sample voltage is the maximum available voltage, but the CKDS1 sample voltage is almost minimal in the transition region. As we discussed, a bigger swing or input level will make the sampler make a correct decision easily. But unfortunately, in the real circuit, the phase skew or jitter will add more timing uncertainty to push in the clock at the unwanted transition spa. At the higher data rate or small bit period TD1, the timing issue is more serious than the lower speed or bigger bit period TB2 here. If we don't improve our circuit design, 
the transmission speed must be decreased to remove the timing error. Therefore, the timing recovery circuit is a must to correct the wrong timing and decrease the BL rate at a high data rate. As shown here, if the clock was too early or too late compared to the ideal sampling or middle of the eye, the feedback loop will push the clock sampling phase back to the grip spot. I hope the image provides you with an intuitive understanding of why we care about the timing in a third system. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from source circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with people who may benefit from it.